No, no. A cup of tea. Welcome back to SDLT. I miss making videos. Will we go weekly? No. Will you enjoy this episode? Yes. Oh, hi. We're in the south end of Grenada and today we're going to take you on a day in the cruising life of a cruiser who's in the south end of Grenada. We're going to visit some friends, say goodbye to some friends because today we're going up the west coast to Halifax Harbor where we're going to spend the night because tomorrow is one of the last days to pass to Kariakou because in the winter winds going to turn north, the so-called Christmas winds. When they hit you're going to be stuck in the south of the Windward Islands forever until the Christmas winds blow over and only then are you able to go up again. There's this conception that you could sail all the time anywhere because of the trade winds. It's not true. Beginning of the season, northeast, north winds kick in and that's it. Well, we're in the southern, southern points of the Windward Islands, so we need to make our way north. South of Grenada is one of the most busy cruising destinations for full-time cruisers. There are many bays in the south and everybody hangs out here during hurricane season and starts to get the boat ready. There's loads of boat yards here too. Clocks court over there. We're in Benji Bay, we took a mooring for the day because apparently the forecast said it was going to be bad weather and it was a bit swelly in the middle of the bay so we decided to pay 20 US a night for the mooring which is quite steep to be honest but we need to prioritize comfort but honestly a mooring ball and a boat doesn't really like each other when there's no wind at all because they start banging on the hull so if there's no wind no matter how long your lines your boat will just eventually drift that way and then that ball just hits the hull and it's banging There are ways to mitigate that noise, but it's just too much work for a night. So we'd rather be tired for the day, I guess. Boat life is exhausting. Place looks pretty good on camera, I must say, but the water is murky. And that is because there's a rum factory and all the excess from the rum factory just lands straight into the bay. And the growth here is insane. So I would never leave my boat here. We actually did leave our boat here. It's uh, I wouldn't swim here. So we need blue water, we're gonna go up to Kariaku, which is way nicer water. Um, we drop the anchor in Tyrell Bay, we can see the bottom again, we can go swim again and snorkel and see some underwater life and just hope that we're gonna have a good season. Oh yeah, we have three tubes in our dinghy and the front one broke because I was driving over a rusty stick that came out of the water down there at the pontoon where the dinghies are docking. Wonder if they could take that rusty stick away. Yo! How old are you? Uh. Whoa. Old enough to break stuff. That's how old you are. Wow, he grew up, huh? probably know him, it's Ricky from Lady Africa. Uh, we just borrowed him our wet gear and an oil pump. Just got that back in Clark's Court and uh, now we're heading back, getting the boat ready. It's not looking too well, but it's just local. I can start with the day. Keep going. You finished the boat? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. 
This was really the best breakfast I've had in a long time. Yeah. We have pancakes with eggs and bacon, and it was really good. A window of opportunity here. Yes. It's been raining like crazy. So now, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Jeez. <laughs> this water looked so nice when we arrived. Ricky even said, oh, this looks good for swimming. It's a mudslide. Wow. This is what happens when it rains oh. here. The water just takes anything on the island. Logs, trees, crab, sand, mud. It looks nasty. Oh, they move. I think we're tired. Right. Perfect time to go, huh? We get him to sleep and then we can have exactly three hours to get to the next boat. So the little dude is out, I think. There we go. And we're gonna wait like a few more minutes before we start the engine because the engine is right under Levi's bed. And if he's out for like 10 minutes, it won't wake him up. It will actually keep him asleep. It's just a short hop over. We can do this. I hate to break it to anybody, but I do not enjoy sailing with a kid. It is really hard on me, mainly, because he wants to be with me. He gets really seasick, he feels bad, he throws up on me, he cries, he's uncomfortable. I don't get to sail, and that's basically it. So yeah, people that enjoy sailing with kids are either lucky, because their kids don't get seasick, or, I don't know, they're good at ignoring how bad their kids feel. I have no idea. It's pretty calm. Perfect conditions for a sail. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one knot of wind and... Uh, what, in here? Yeah. There's waves outside. Maybe it's yeah. not ideal. <laughs> He opened his eyes and then we're like, what is that? All right, I'll go back to sleep. So one of our mooring lines was a bit short, so we decided to do a bowline on the eye of the mooring line, of the mooring ball, which is annoying now because we have to pull it up to get the pressure off instead of just like loosening one and just slipping out. Not ideal. Also, the lines are like wrapped around the bowl. I really don't like mooring bowls. So for my anchor. Yeah. This is such a hassle. <laughs> Good job. What the f are you kidding me? There's a knot in it now. <laughs> yeah. We are pros at mooring balls. I think this is like the third one we've done in three years. I ten times prefer met mooring <laughs> in winds over tying up to a mooring ball without wind it's just it's, oh, i don't like it so when we arrived here in the bay we tried anchoring in like 12 13 meters of water because it's all really deep here and we hadn't anchored in i want to say four months or something like that, maybe even longer. And the windlass was just sounding horrifying, like really bad, no matter what I did. And uh, so I loosened it up and then we started losing all the chain because um, it was just running out. So that was not the problem, it wasn't too tight. And then Alex opened it up yesterday and the mud and sand that was just under the gypsum was insane. He had to like hack it out with a screwdriver. So I just tested it, it sounds Perfect again. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a dirt line right over here. That's where the dirty water and the logs and the sand and the mud just stops. That there is the reef. There. So that's where you see the waves. There's more reef over there. See some waves too. I'm gonna go around it. I'm pretty sure we mentioned this before, but right before we left, we got a really big dinghy. I mean, it's way, way, way too big for our boat. It doesn't fit on deck. 
It weighs like 70 kilos, I think, because it's a 3 meter 20 fiberglass bottom thingy. But it is so amazing. We just tried it once and we couldn't say no then. We're like, okay, this is just too good to beat. And now we're always dragging a dinghy, which we're not big fans of, but there's just no way to do it otherwise. And with having Levy and, you know, the bit rougher seas and longer distances we have to do here, it's just so perfect. And even though it's a bit old, it's painted, we drove over a pointy stick and we now need to fix it because there's a leak in the front tube. It is the best and it makes life on a boat so much better. The area in the south is pretty um, shallow and there's reefs everywhere and we are on five to six meters at all times. Um, the only threat is the porpoises here and being too close to the reefs here. So we're just going to take a distance. That should be enough. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Damn! Jesus. What was that? <laughs> Grenada in the rain, guys. Look at that. Just rounded the Cape. Um, just as expected on the lee side of the island. No swell, steady wind, a bit northerly, you know. But it's a good sail. We're gonna motor up. There's a cruise ship. Further, there's weather up there. I think we're gonna get some rain. Guys, if you ever wonder what it's like to be in a cruise ship wake, wonder no more. It's gonna happen in five, four. That is like better than 98% of small motor yachts we've passed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Three, three, three. Dreh, dreh, dreh. Ich dreh am Knopf und drück dann drauf. So now we're just passing the Bay of uh, St. George. St. George has a marina, Port Louis. We've been there for a month. It is amazing. It's such a good marina. There's little wind in that lagoon. I really appreciate the marineros. They helped a lot. The marina village is beautiful. There's a pool, super yachts come in. It's amazing. We really loved it there. And the cruise ship dock is right next to it. Cruise ship season has begun. Car rentals are booked out. There's so many activities, so many buses going places. The whole island's getting flooded with people for a few days. Oh, it's just like buzzing again. Maybe that's also because COVID's over. Who knows? Well, over there, that's Dragon Bay. There's underwater, underwater statues, which is probably not gonna do it, so you won't see them. And we're just gonna snug around and go to the Cape. Uh, Halifax Harbor's on the right side, and Black Point is the Cape. We're just gonna find a nice spot to anchor. Tomorrow, head further north to Karaku. Hey, how are you? I hope you're fine. If you like the video, press like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. We cannot guarantee weekly videos. We simply don't have the time. Also, we're working on something in the background because our lives are going to change in the coming months. So even more of a reason to stay tuned. Okay, okay, thank you. Halifax Harbor is not a harbor, but a bay. 
It's wild, hidden, and it looks like you're in the jungle. It smells like someone burns trash, and that is because they do. It's a trash burn site. So we decide to move away from the smell around the corner where the water is also less muddy. We just anchored, second time's a charm. Put Leifi down in his bed, netting up, gave him the iPad. Look at it. It's not how I left him. You're coming! Yeah! Come on, Clarissa! How's the show? Boy, 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 scrape my leg, girl. Oh, he turned it off. Happy with it? The result? It's alright for the night. Always a bit deep swells, and we're just dancing. But until now, I think the dancing but, is really okay. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And we're on seven meters and we almost saw the anchor. Yes, I did. It looks wild and look at this beach. It actually looks really cute. It just has black sand and I wonder why. Is this volcanic? I don't know. Oh, Leifi managed to put on a new show. <laughs> we're not used to the movement so much anymore. It's really interesting. I didn't think we'd lose our sea legs, but I think we have to get back into it. So I'm just going to make a nice pasta and get us all fit. So when I started editing the video, I didn't expect to make it to the 16 minute mark by just arriving in Halifax. So I guess this is a two part video. So next one, we'll make the jump. And let me tell you, the conditions were as good as they get that time of the year. And we were still beating. Some of us had a good time. Some of us did not have a good time. Let us know in the comments who you think has the stronger stomach and see you next time. Thanks for watching. I missed making videos. See you soon. Okay, bye.